Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm George Conley with Scratch Golf Tips. Today we're going through a beginner's guide to the grasses that we often see on the golf course. Now this is not only something that is fairly interesting to learn, I know that if you ever watch golf on TV, you'll often see or hear the announcers talk about the specific types of grass. I'm a little bit of a golf course nerd, so I find this stuff very interesting. But if you're one who plays in different areas, especially here in the United States, the grasses that you'll see up north in New England or the Midwest differs heavily from what we see in the south or out west so I think understanding what these grasses are and how they interact with your golf club and your golf ball it's very important and it can do nothing but help your golf so the main two grasses that we'll see on golf courses are Bermuda grass and bent grass so let's start off by talking about Bermuda grass now Bermuda grass is a durable and a warm weather grass it is fairly drought resistant so it doesn't need a ton of water which is why it's the most popular grass that we'll see uh, in the southern part of the United States. I play out of Florida. Basically every single golf course here has Bermuda grass. Now speaking from a personal standpoint, I've played a lot of golf in New England. I've played a lot of golf in Florida. Uh, the way that I stand on Bermuda grass is when you're out of the fairway and you're out of the rough, Bermuda is much more forgiving than bent grass. Bent grass is what we see up north, um, but around the greens, chipping and putting is a little bit more difficult personally for me on Bermuda than it is on bent grass. Comparatively, Bermuda grass is pretty slick. It can be quick and it can be firm. And one thing that a lot of golfers will notice is that unless that golf course is really wet and just recently got rain, Bermuda grass greens are not nearly as receptive to the golf ball, meaning that you're not gonna see these massive divots in the green. It's much more difficult to spin the ball back. Putting touch shots on the, on the greens uh, with your chipping is a little bit more difficult to do. So there's less finesse involved on the firmness and the durable Bermuda grass around the greens. So that's the general breakdown of Bermuda grass. Now let's talk about bent grass, which as I said earlier, it's more suited to the northern, uh, you know, some more cold temperatures. It still is a durable grass, but not as drought resistant as Bermuda is. Loosely speaking, bent grass will be a little bit slower. It grows out a little bit fuzzier. So unless you're playing a very well manicured golf course, it is slower and much more receptive than uh, Bermuda grass is. Now, when you're on a bent grass golf course, the rough on either side of the fairway will generally be a little bit more firm and it's going to grab that club a little bit more. You can also get a lot more variability in bent grass lies because that ball can really sit up atop of it or it can sink down. When you're hitting out of Bermuda fairways, it's a little bit more wispy. A lot of that Bermuda rough, unless it's really, really grown out, uh, Bermuda rough is pretty easy to get through. Uh, it, it's a fairly wispy uh, grass. It really doesn't stand up. It's difficult to grow Bermuda super high. I know that the US Open just did it recently out at the Los Angeles Country Club under a lot of scrutiny. But um, generally speaking, with bent grass, if you're missing the fairway, it's going to be a lot more difficult to get the ball out of there cleanly than it would be hitting from the rough on Bermuda grass. Another important discrepancy between bent grass and Bermuda grass is the concept of grain. Uh, Bermuda grass, you'll often hear players hitting into the grain, putting away from the grain. Uh, uh, and that's not really something we see on bent grass. Bent grass doesn't grow as much with the grain. However, if you have played on Bermuda grass, you'll know that you can be over a shot chipping and all that grass seems like it's growing right into your club. And when that, when that grass is growing in, that really makes your job a little bit more difficult because as that club bottoms out, especially with those finesse shots like chipping and pitching, uh, that if you're into the grain, that grain can really eat up the sole of your club and you'll chunk a lot more chips. Uh, conversely, if you're with the grain, uh, it seems like you're, you're almost playing golf on easy mode sometimes because that grain will just help scoop your club right along. And that concept is not only important when chipping on Bermuda greens, but also putting. Uh, you'll often see very slick greens or you'll see a little bit more of a dull color. That's a way to indicate the grain of the green. So, you know, we, all, we always think about, oh, this is moving left to right. This is moving uphill, downhill. But when you're putting Bermuda, you actually have to consider the grain of the putt too. Now a third grass that is not as popular as bent grass or Bermuda is Poana. The scientific pronunciation of Poana is actually Poa annua. You may hear it pronounced that way sometimes, but you also may hear some people just refer to it as Po. 
Poana was a lot more popular many years ago. I know that Pebble Beach had it a while ago. I think it may actually still have Poana on it. Winged Foot uses Poana. So a lot of those older clubs have it. It's very resistant to a lot of foot traffic, but on Poana golf courses, you need to really maintain it quite well. So generally speaking, a mid-level public golf course or a lower level private golf course, they don't have the funds. It doesn't make sense for them to have Poana. And also, if you've ever heard uh, golfers complain about a putting surface, especially professional golfers there's always complaints about poana unless it's really pristinely done there can be some inconsistencies on the green so uh, in the past the pga tours come under plenty of scrutiny for having poana greens they're not always the fairest of greens is what many people will say but it is such a wonderful surface to play on if they're well maintained but that is again a big if Finally, let's talk about Fescue. Now, Fescue is a little bit different than the other three that I named because you'll never see a golf course that is a Fescue golf course. There is just Fescue that exists on a golf course. You'll often hear Fescue with some of the major championships that are played uh, in men's and women's professional golf. US Opens will generally have Fescue and British Opens or the Open Championship will also have Fescue. Generally, this is an unmown area of Fescue grass that is just led to grow very high to penalize golf. It's in native areas of golf courses. It can actually be a little bit wispy, so it won't necessarily jam your club entirely, but its sheer height can actually hold on to the not only the club face, but actually the steel of the grip or, or the steel of the club itself. So avoid fescue if you can. Uh, generally, a lot of the public golf courses that uh, a standard golfer will play won't have a ton of fescue. Uh, it's not really popular down south. Down south, you sometimes have pine straw or you may have sawgrass in some areas. Fescue is more popular in New England. I know that a lot of the great New York courses, Beth Page Black, Shinnecock, courses like that, they can really grow out that fescue and make it difficult. But it's not really something that the average non-professional golfer has to deal with all too often. But it's certainly something that we hear all the time on television when watching some of those majors. So I hope that you learned a little bit about these grasses and what they mean for the golf course. If you're ever playing a new golf course and you want to know uh, a little bit more about the grasses that are used, oftentimes those golf courses will tell you about the grasses they use uh, on the website of the golf course. And I think that some of the uh, apps and websites that you can book tee times through, I believe Golf Now has a feature where uh, a lot of courses will, it will say greens used, bent grass slash whatever else is on that golf course. So that's just a way to understand it a little bit if you want to know what you're coming into when playing a new golf course, or if you don't know what the current course is that you play, if you don't know what they're using for grasses and you wanna know, I'm sure a lot of that information is readily available with a Google search. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. If you have any questions on anything that I talked about, any questions on different grasses, there are plenty of other grasses like zoysia, all different kinds of things that I didn't mention. This is just kind of the basic four that I thought made sense to present to all of you, but leave any questions or comments in the comment section down below. Thank you all very much for watching. Play well and take care.